Hello and welcome to this special program of the GHW podcast. Thank you all of us for joining us. My name is Miguel Garcia. I'm a human rights journalist based in Colombia and I'm part of the communications team at PHM Global. On January 9, PHM launched the GHW podcast, a seven episode audio series dedicated to share the content of PHM flagship publication, the Global Health Watch 6 in the shadow of the pandemic. Our guests today are Eva Wokold, Social Rights Program Director at the Russell Luxemburg Stiftung in Geneva, Roman Vega, People's Health Movement Global Coordinator, and Chiara Bodini. Uh, she's a Global Health Watch Program Coordinator at PHM. She's co-editor of the book and executive producer of the GHW podcast. Welcome to the show. I want to start by asking um, Eva, uh, the Rosa Luxemburg Stiftung works in collaboration with international ally organizations of, uh, for the social eco uh, ecological transformation and to the implementation of social rights in a on a global scale. And of course, PHM and uh, RSL, RLS uh, have been partners in different projects in the past. What was interesting about this project for R RSL? Um, thanks a lot, Miguel, and thanks a lot for the invitation to this launch today. And um, first of all, Happy New Year to everyone. And um, hope this is this will turn out to be a better year than the last year, also with regard to global health. Um, yeah, um, as you said, uh, we are an organization that is working towards the realization of democratic and social rights on a global scale. And... Um, Within that work on global social rights, we are also working on um, the realization of the right to health and on global on the global health system in general. We are an organization based in Germany and Berlin, um, but with uh, 27 offices worldwide, including this office in Geneva that I'm working in since 2019. And um, yeah, with this network that we have, mm -hmm. we try to um, support organizations, movements, activists, also individual people, um, political uh, projects around the world um, towards uh, like enabling the creation of a more solidary and just society. And um, uh, for me, that uh, is focusing on social rights here in Geneva and also on the on the global, um, more global level. It was uh, really imminent that we should work uh, with the people's health movement on on this topic because um, what we will try to do in the future and what we've um, tried already is um, to yeah more or less um, bring um, voice to to activists around the world particularly in the global south and um, and to um, yeah to feature their voices uh, particularly in the discussions here so um, that's why uh, the People's Health Movement was uh, like more or less a natural part partner for us, but also um, the Global Health Watch report um, was a very, um, yeah, for us a tool to use um, to more to on the one hand find out what the discussions are around the world, but also um, yeah to support um, because uh, we think it's really important uh, that uh, that there are. Um, publications like this, um, and and uh, and uh, that the voices that are um, um, in there that they are being heard. And uh, while we always thought like uh, that's a great project in itself already, um, the report, we also thought that it's probably um, a, a tool that reaches a certain amount of people because it's a very big book and it's. Um, it's uh, probably not so easy to to spread. We've ha had the same experience with our own publications. So um, there is definitely a readership that will use it a lot, but um, maybe we can reach out to more people if we also use other formats. And um, that's why we came up uh, together um, with the People's Health Movement uh, with the idea to have this podcast series, um, because I, I think it's... Um, it's uh, very um, useful to spread the word even further because there's such a big um, resource that is in, in the publication itself and it would be 
would be nice to use it even even more than it's been used so far. And um, yeah, we um, are um, uh, part part of our organization is a think tank, and we we are also a funder of projects. Um, but uh, yeah, we think our role in this uh, is um, to uh, yeah to um, help uh, the people self movement to um, to um, get an even bigger audience for for this report and uh, and also um, to then try to integrate it in our in our work around the world. So that's that's why we are here today, I guess. <laughs> Uh, this uh, audio series, the DHW podcast, uh, had the financial support from Rosa, L Rosa Luxemburg Stiftung. Um, and RLS is actually producing podcasts podcast itself. It's got a various of publications. Um, let's talk about a little bit of the possibilities of this media for social change, in your view. Yeah, I think that, um, uh, like, we, we've been... Uh, using podcasts as a means for um, a couple of years already. And I think it's uh, like, um, as an organization, it's uh, one of the most successful um, tools that we've been using. So some of our podcasts that um, we have produced as an organization have um, uh, up to 40,000 regular users. Um, and uh, yeah, and I think it's, um, it's, uh, a tool that um, is not only good to reach also a more younger audience, maybe, but um, but to reach a regular audience because uh, uh, people like uh, get um, get uh, like an abonnement more or less of a of a certain podcast and are regularly informed that there are new episodes and and I like using that um, like a TV series <laughs> more or less, I think. So they also get used that there 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 are news uh, new new episodes coming up and um, yeah I think it's uh, it's really um, uh, the the means of the of the current times um, in terms of uh, bringing information through and it's also um, I mean videos are very often we are also um, producing videos are helping to pr produce videos but they are mostly very short like. Within a couple of minutes, you have to um, have to bring across like a, a bigger topic. But in the podcast, you have more time. You can you can have more in depth analysis, and and that's also what the Global Health Watch report is about. No, it's about in depth analysis. So I think that's uh, that's like the perfect way to bring the message across. Well, thank you so much. I want to take the conversation now to Kiara. Um, Kiara, after the release of the Global Health Watch 6 in 2022, um, why did PHM decided to produce uh, this podcast? Thanks. Uh, well, um, I think we, as in, in PHM and its allied organizations, we've always been very proud of, of Global Health Watch reports. It's, it's really something that we value a lot. But uh, we were also very conscious of the limitations that Eva also spoke about and a bit frustrated that um, the, the richness in the book was not reaching out as much as we wanted, it was not helping in movement building as much as we wanted. So I have to say that with this sixth edition, the, um, uh, the, the thinking around uh, dissemination was very much part of building the book itself. So it's, uh, it didn't start afterwards. We were very conscious that, you know, our goal as, as production team, as editorial group, would not end once the book would, would be published. Um, be, because really getting the book, first of all, disseminating the book and also the content is, is as much important as, as writing it. So uh, then we tried to consult and, and, you know, and, and discuss within the movement what were the formats that were at once um, more useful and also more manageable for us. Uh, you know, we, PHM has developed now a stronger communication capacity. We are more able to partner with other organizations like Rosa Luxemburg that, that have also this capacity. And so podcast seems something that, you know, would, would, was flexible, not, not so complicated, even though it was complicated in the end <laughs> to realize. But at first we, we thought it would be more manageable 
manageable than other products that requires even more technical skills. Um, we also um, saw the potential, uh, which again became a bit complicated, to realize podcasts in different languages. And this was another great limitation of the book. We, uh, we know that the book is only in English. We know that the majority of our activists, or a lot, large part of our activists, um, live in, in, in countries that do not speak English or not have English as a, their main language. So um, overcoming this barrier was very important for us. And, and we, we tried to play out with the flexibility of the podcast, although it wasn't easy, as, as Miguel and also Jotna know very well. Um, we had to engage a series of uh, other people to help us to not only to translate, but also to interpret again the podcast in different languages. So it was a bit of a, a pilot for us. Um, and but but we hope that uh, that we succeed and we will see. So the podcasts, just to to say to everybody, are available in English, French, Spanish, and Arabic, which are the four main languages in which PHM uh, is is more and more committed to work. I also have to say that this is uh, I, I'm quite uh, proud of this because if you go back a few years, uh, PHM was mainly working in English, so it's really a great achievement, and um, and it, it was important to have the support also of Rosa Luxemburg. For us to be able to, you know, to have also the, the capacity to, uh, yeah, to, to step, you know, to, to move one step forward in this kind of dissemination. Um, let's talk about just a little bit on so that our listeners and our viewers can, can understand. Um, what are the main topics approach on the podcast in relation to the book? Because the book has, um, this is a large book, it's got many chapters. Uh, so how did you went about this uh, producing of the podcast in terms of the episodes and, and the production yeah, so, itself? So, so there is a tight connection between the book and the movement in the sense that the whole structure of the book is produced in consultation with the movement. When I say the movement is not strictly PHM, it may be other organizations that are formally or informally allied with PHM. So, so the very, um, the, the birth of the book and the process of producing the book also reflects the priorities of the movements. Um, and in a sense, we follow the same um, principle for selecting the podcast. Of course, we had to, to make a choice. Uh, we ended up selecting uh, seven chapters. Um, and uh, again, we did it in consultation and we tried to prioritize the chapters that have a tighter link with uh, what we call the PHM um, thematic circles. So PHM is organized around um, themes, besides other uh, ways of organizing around regions uh, and countries. So these themes, um, which are gender, gender justice and health, health systems, uh, war and conflict and migration, uh, trade and health, um, environment, um, environmental justice and extractivism and health, um, I hope I named them all. If not, somebody help me. Um, so we, there are chapters that are either produced by the thematic circles themselves or produced by other authors, but in consultation and, or in relationship with the thematic circle. So these are the uh, topics that we chose uh, for the podcast because we felt that they were more needed. We also face a, a constraint with the book, which is that the book is not immediately available um, as it is published. You know, it needs to be purchased or it needs to be distributed. Um, and we had many requests, especially by activists of our thematic circles, to access the content of the chapters because it is relevant for their advocacy, for their campaigns. And unfortunately, we have a barrier uh, in this until the book becomes freely available, which should, should happen soon. Um, so we, that's why we prioritize the podcast as a way to deliver the content where it was most needed. We also uh, made the first poster, the first episode, which was released on Monday, which is on the global, what we call the global political and economic architecture. This uh, covers two of the introductory chapters of the book, which set a bit the framework of the, the deep interconnections between the system, the social, political, cultural um, system, environmental system in which we live, and the repercussions on health and, and health equity worldwide. So that's, that's a little bit... Uh, how the, the podcasts are structured, and of course, all the relevant information uh, can be found on our website. So, uh, so the podcast is um, uh, released and, and, and published every Monday from uh, January the 9th until uh, February the 20th, something like that, right? Every Monday. Every Monday. Stay tuned. 
<laughs> uh, I want to take the conversation now to um, to Roman Vega. Um, Roman, uh, in a global perspective, what is the scope of the podcast and the analysis and experiences reported in the Global Health Watch? What can we learn from that experience? Thank you, Miguel, for that question, which is very important for, for us. Uh, but first of all, I would like to thank Rosa Luxembourg Stephen for uh, the support for publishing uh, this podcast. And, uh, but I also want to acknowledge that Rosa Luxembourg Stephen has been supporting PHM before. Uh, I remember the booklet published called a struggle for health. Uh, it was published first in English, but the last year, Rosa Luxemburg supported Latin America and PHN uh, as a whole, publishing the book like in Spanish and uh, you know updating some parts of the booklet. So this effort regarding a uh, Global Health Watch six podcast. Is very important for us. It, it will have a very, very big impact at the global level, especially in the global south. Many times people in the global science, uh, south has been asking for reading Global Health Watch. We have published already six uh, books, six, uh, uh, you know, different uh, books edition, but never uh, grads roots organizations, individuals, and the activists, the health activists, and the communities had the opportunity to read the content of the book because it always has been published in English and always because, and also because that is a very big book. It's not easy to read for current people. So this opportunity of having podcasts not only solve the problem, uh, or for having uh, the book translated into other languages, different from English, but also we have popularized the way of approaching the book. That is a way of introducing the books to everybody at different levels, not only for academic, for academic people and intellectual, but also for common people. That is very important for us. And of course, the content of the book that is related to so important determinant of health, departing from the economic, say, you know, aspects uh, that shape societies and including the political aspect, but also going to specific determinant of health, extractivism, gender, and so on. This is a very broad approach that uh, provide a very interesting guideline, not only for PHN activists, but also for many uh, health activists and other outside the health sector. Uh, several institutions are very interested in this book. So the impact of this book is very important and the podcast play a very, 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 very important role regarding this. And now we are going to be uh, in this year, 2023, in a very interesting scenario for PHN and for the struggle for health, uh, we are going to have the a People Health Assembly number five, and also we are going to launch in this assembly a People Health Tribunal targeting the transnational corporation that has been damaging the health of everybody in the whole world. So this opportunity of mobilizing Global Health Watch and the podcast is very important for us. So that's why I thank uh, a lot to Rosa Luxembourg Stephon, but also to Chiara and the group that has been working in Global Health Watch uh, with Ron Labonte, and the communicator team that have uh, been doing a very interesting work regarding the popularization of Global Health Watch 6. Uh, thank you, Roman. Um, the, the Global Health Watch podcast is available for free on iVox. 
And in all four PHM languages, uh, English, Spanish, French, and Arabic, you can find all the details of the podcast on the PHM's website, um, www.phmovement.org. Uh, also, Kiara, I wanted to um, also address the fact that the not just the podcast is available right now, but also the introduction of the book, it's available in different languages. Why don't we talk about a little bit this, about this? Yes, we, 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 this is one victory we had, not agreement we had with the publisher that the introduction could be freely available. So the introduction of the book in English has been available almost a month, I think, after publication. Uh, but then we also obtained permission to, to translate it. Uh, and we managed to translate it besides the four languages, English, Spanish, Arabic and French, also in Italian, Portuguese and German. So all these versions are available from our website that you just remembered. The introduction uh, maybe will <laughs> give appetite for reading the book. Let's say that the introduction traditionally in Global Ed Watch covers a little bit the sections of the book. So the global political and economic architecture, the section about health systems, the section about social determinants of health, and the section about watching the, the, the global governance institutions or institutions that have an impact on global, on global health. And, um, and so it covers these sections and basically it summarizes what, what, what was analyzed in the previous editions and what this edition adds. So it really gives a comprehensive overview of what the book is about. Well, I want to thank you guys for your participation. Um, follow, remember to follow us on Twitter at PHM Global. Um, this is an invitation to listen, share, comment, and stay tuned with the podcast. Join us in the struggle for health for all. Thank you, all of, God, all of you, for being here with us today. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Miguel.